Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about collets. Collets are a very common work and tool holding method in machining. So today we're gonna to discuss a little bit about them. We're gonna talk about their advantages, situations where you'd use them, their basic anatomy and basic function. So collets function by having a back threaded portion, as you can see here, followed by uh, tapered flexures that run up the body. These are each divided by slits um, that are cut into the front of the collet. Now, when the threaded portion is pulled into whatever is holding it, like a collet chuck or a collet block, um, there is a compressive force that's applied on each of the flexures, which causes them to deflect downwards and compress whatever is being held by the collet, whether that be your tool or your part. Um, so depending on what you're working on, you might need to use a different collet because different types of collets are compatible with different chucks, different collet bodies, or just different worker tool holding methods in general. Um, so in front of you, we have all different types of collets that we have in lab. They are 3J, 5C, R8, ER, or extended range collets, and emergency collets. Okay, so there are a lot of benefits to using a collet to hold either your part or your tool when you, uh, as compared to an alternative method. A lot of these stem from the fact that there's gonna be a lot more contact area in between the inside bore of the collet and the shank of the tool that you're using or your part. Um, the increase in contact area is gonna provide a lot more distributed clamping force around the shank or your part, which is gonna get a lot of added benefits. Uh, one of those is you're gonna have a lot more repeatable of a clamp so let's say I was using a 5C collet, working the lathe, I'd be able to take my part in and out um, every time without risking the repeatability of that clamp. It'd be pretty much the exact same amount of run out every single time, uh, which is a big difference from, let's say, a three jaw chuck, because if you were to take it out um, of a chuck and put it back in, you can be pretty certain that those two clamps are not gonna be concentric with each other. Uh, the di distributed force, also provides um, a benefit that there's not gonna be as much marring on the outside surface of your part. So if you ever crank down on something um, in a three jaw chuck, when you take it out, you'll notice that there's gonna be some pretty conspicuous marks left on the outside surface. Uh, that won't happen with a collet because the inside surface is smooth and the clamping force is distributed around, around the entire circumference. Um, you can also clamp on inconsistent surfaces like threads. So if I had a part um, that had a threaded portion on one side, um, I would be able to clamp on those threads even though it's on a consistent cylinder, uh, as long as the major diameter would fit within the tolerance range defined by the collet. Um, you can also clamp on very small amounts of material with collets. So let's say I was turning a shoulder with only about 100 thou worth of material to clamp on, I'd be able to do that using a collet without risking my part flying out. Um, also, you can spin uh, collet chucks at a lot higher speeds because centripetal forces aren't gonna cause jaws to want to move away from the spindle center line like they would if you're using a three or four jaw. Um, since you're not limited by this, you can turn the speed a lot higher. Um, also, there's gonna be a lot less inertia gathered by a collet chuck when compared to a three or a four jaw because there's a lot less mass and a lower profile, um, so it's inherently safer. Collets don't come without disadvantages, however. Um, for any given collet, there's a really strict tolerance range of sizes of stock that can fit with inside the bore. Uh, for that reason, it's gonna be really expensive to buy um, the entire range of collets that you're gonna need um, to work on any given size that you want. Even so, uh, for certain types of collets, there might be non-nominal sizes that are gonna be impossible to work on. Um, also, given the strict tolerance range, they're easily damageable. Um, so if I was to put a size lock that was too small for this given collet and tighten down on it and put it within a chuck, I can permanently damage the collet. Um, also, uh, you can't do eccentric turning with a collet. Uh, you can't mount it in a collet chuck somehow, so it's gonna spin around uh, an axis that's not the center. Okay, so you can see in front of you a close-up of the previous shot. Um, arrayed out on this table are different types of collets that we have in the lab. Uh, we're going to go into talking about each individual type uh, now and their different uses. The first one we're going to discuss is an R8 collet. Uh, many of you should already have experience with this. R8 collets are generally used for tool holding and manual milling machines. Um, you'll note in the lab that we have an array or a collet rack on the left side of each of the bridge ports. Uh, the function of this collet is pretty much exactly how it was described earlier. Uh, there, is, there are some female threads in the back of the collet that will engage with the drawbar when the drawbar controls are activated on the milling machine. 
Uh, this will cause the collet to be pulled up into the machine and therefore the flexures on the front will compress providing a clamping force on your tool. Um, as you can see as well, there is a keyway that runs along the back side of the body. This makes it so that the collet can only be accepted into the machine in one angular orientation. So it makes sure, it makes sure that it is indexed properly. Uh, there are not a wide variety of sizes of R8 collets. They generally come in steps of sixteenths of an inch. Okay, next we're going to talk about 5C collets. Uh, unlike R8 collets, 5C collets are generally used for work holding rather than tool holding. However, they have a similar geometry and structure to R8 collets. Um, as you can see, they are a little bit shor uh, shorter and the back threads are male threads rather than female threads. 5C collets generally come in a wider uh, array of sizes. So generally, they come in 1 64th of an inch increments, with the largest being about 1 and an eighth inch. Uh, so there are a couple different types of fixtures that are used to hold 5C collets and subsequently your part. One of those is a collet block. Collet blocks are essentially hardened steel fixtures that come in different shapes and sizes in which you can secure your 5C collet. As you can see here, we have a square-shaped collet block as well as a hexagonal-shaped collet block. After the collet and the workpiece are secured in the collet block, the entire assembly can then be mounted in other fixtures, such as a vise as shown in the photo. The geometry of the block can then be used to cut certain features, like a hex or a square, also in the photo. Um, the way these are used is you'll take your 5C collet and insert it into the collet block. As you see, the male threads poke out the end of it. From there, you will take a collet nut and tighten down on the collet, uh, providing the last bit of torque with a spanner wrench. However, I'm not gonna do that right now because you never want to uh, tighten down or torque down on a collet that has nothing inside of it. Doing so will cause the flexures to deflect without an opposing force, uh, which will cause them to permanently deform. Uh, so never do that. Also, make sure that you're only clamping on the size intended for the collet. Uh, you never want to clamp on a piece of material that's further away than two or three thou away from the nominal size of the bore in the collet. Uh, if you do so, then similarly you could permanently deform or damage the collet. Um, also, when using collet blocks, it's important to index the back keyway of the collet with the set screw on the top of the collet block. Um, you want to index it to make sure that it's only going in one angular orientation so the collet won't spin within the collet block. So it's really important that you tighten the set screw down on this flat of the collet. Um, another fixture is a collet chuck that you can put on a lathe. So similar to a three or four jaw chuck on a lathe, there's also collet chucks in which you can screw in a 5C collet um, and it will be held securely. So you can hold your part that way as well on a lathe. Um, 5C collets come in a variety of sizes and uh, different types. So the one we just showed has a smooth internal bore. However, uh, this one has serrations on the inside. If you were to tighten down on your part uh, with this collet, it would provide a much more robust work holding method. There are also different shapes um, that you could fit within 5C collets. So as you can see here, uh, there's a square board in this collet and a hex if we need to um, do work on square sock or hexagonal sock. Also uh, we have what are called emergency collets which are they come in a blank form which you can then cut away material to fit any type of shape that you need to hold. Um, so this is an example of a cutaway shape. Uh, you can either mill, turn, or bore uh, the material away from the collet to fit whichever feature or geometry that you need. Uh, so this was made to hold a, a large circular piece, as you can see. Uh, this allows you to hold um, pretty much any geometry uh, that you require. Also, we have 3J collets, which are pretty much the exact same as 5C, except they're a little bit larger. Um, their application and uses and function is the exact same. Um, the big difference now is that the largest size that you can clamp on is an inch and three quarters. 
Okay, lastly, we have ER or extended range collets. Um, ER collets are used for tool holding in either manual or CNC mills or lathes. As you can see, there are a variety of different size classes that each are called extended range. So at the small end, we have ER11 collets, then ER16, ER20s, ER25s, ER32s, and lastly, ER40s. So basically, the bigger the collet, the larger tools that you can clamp on. A big advantage to using ER collets is that you're not going to be restricted to nominal sizes like you would be if you're using 5C or R8 collets. Uh, the reason is the increase in the amount of slits in the collet allow it to compress over a much larger range, so you're not going to be restricted to you know, the two or three thou tolerance range um, like you would be for other collets. Um, you can actually clamp on things as far away as 30 thou um, from the nominal size of the collet. So if you had a tool that was 30 thou smaller in diameter, you still might be able to use one of these collets. Um, a way to do this would be to find whatever size collet you're gonna be using. So let's say like an ER32, get your tool um, and find the, the smallest collet that your tool will fit in. And then you clamp down on it, um, it will provide adequate work holding. Um, this is a big benefit because you don't need as many collets uh, to clamp over a wide variety of sizes. Okay, finally, we're gonna talk about proper collet care. Uh, so before you use a collet, you wanna make sure it's fit for use. The first thing you wanna do is clean it off, get rid of any excess debris or oil that's on it. You can use some WD-40, just spray a little bit onto the blue shop towel and wipe down the collet, the outside, the threads, and the inside. You could also use a Q-tip to reach some hard to reach places like the inside of the threads or the middle of the bore. After you do that, you want to provide some lubrication to the threads to make sure they're not going to seize when you put it in the fixture, like the collet block or the collet chuck. If they were to seize, it will make it really hard to extract the collet out of the fixture, which could damage um, you know, the collet chuck, collet block, or the collet itself. So to do that, I'll take some oil, apply it to the threads, again using a new Q-tip, spread it around and make sure there's adequate lubrication. Any type of lubrication can work. You can either use oil or grease, something like that. Um, so now, when you're finished, let's say we did all our work, we're done with the collet, uh, we wanna make sure it's ready for proper storage. Um, to do that, we're gonna use some rust inhibitor. And again, using a blue shop towel, just spray a couple sprays on and wipe down the collet, the threads, also, focus on the inside of the bore here. You can just wipe down the inside. You really want to make sure the inside bore isn't going to rust. That's going to affect the accuracy of the collar.